Hey everyone, Dr. Frunke here with my second live video here. Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, copper scale conversion here on my uh, Shirogorov F3. Hey man, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. I tried to announce this one uh, on Instagram early so that people could start coming in. I'm going to let some people start filtering in here. How's it going everyone? Hey Nick, hey Sandwich, how's it going dudes? So we're going to do a little surgery tonight on this knife. I'm just going to let some people filter in here, see how it's going. What's going on, everyone? All right, all right, what's going on? Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming around. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing tonight? All right, we got a few people in here. We can go ahead and get started. Thanks for coming to the stream, guys. Uh, this is the second time I've done this. I tried to uh, talk about it a little bit. I wanted to give a little preview before we start getting down to business here with the uh, the scale conversion. I wanted to show a few things that are coming up on the channel. Uh, see what you guys are most excited about. Get some really live feedback here and see what you want to see first. Uh, I just made a post actually today uh, about this knife right here. Uh, maybe you guys saw this. This is the uh, brand new Guthrie. This came to me from my buddy Nico. Check out this Rose Damasteel. Absolutely awesome. Awesome knife right there. Beautiful thing right here. What do you guys think of this? Super cool. Uh, Sandwich, who's in here right now, just sent me this. So I'm going to preview this guy. This is the uh, the first Chavez I've ever held. This is a 228 right here. Absolutely badass. Check this out. Very, very cool. That's definitely going to appeal to me uh, with the skull clip. <laughs> very cool. Uh, I've been looking at these knives, haven't picked one up yet, but it's very cool. Uh, and I'm part of a, uh, a knife pass around, so Sandwich also just sent me this. This is the Boker Lateralis, so I'm excited to try this one out. Uh, this one came to me from Purvis, uh, Adam Purvis. I don't know if he's in here right now, but uh, this is a neat little knife. Yeah, no, I am live right now. It is true. What's going on, Tony? Tony has sent me a whole bunch of knives. I have a whole bunch of his knives coming up on the channel. Here's, uh, I filmed this one today, the Kaiser Gemini. That one was filmed today, uploaded. Uh, the Kaiser Critical. Tony did this one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super nice knife right there. Uh, got to the Arc Form Slim Foot. Everyone is excited about this knife, but uh, a bit of a, an odd duck if you ask me. So uh, very, very interesting there. And uh, another video that got done was the uh, Wayfarer 247. So a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. Glad you guys are joining in here. Some of my friends seeing what's coming up soon. So thanks for joining in. Let's go ahead and get started on this conversion then. Thanks for stopping in. So I've got my tools out here. You really only need a couple of things to take apart uh, Shirogorov. But uh, the number one thing you need to have are uh, balls of steel because... This thing has freely uh, loose ball bearings inside of this pivot and it's going to come apart. And I'm going to do it live and we're going to see if it works. So I'm going to clear out my space a little bit here. Uh, we can take a look at the scales first before I even put them on. Uh, I don't know how good the resolution is going to be here. This doesn't really go at uh, 4K like my normal videos do. So I may have to make a secondary video here. But this is uh, copper dust carbon fiber. Uh, that comes from uh, a company called Carbon Plate. So Carbon Plate seems to be the manufacturer that makes the carbon fiber products for Shirogorov. So this is uh, as close to authentic as you're going to get, and this is copper dust. So from my understanding, the way that this works is the resin is actually somehow impregnated with copper dust, and then the carbon fiber is made with this coppery resin. Uh, Shirogorov right now is uh, selling versions of this same uh, carbon fiber, but there is, there's as green and white and red. Uh, this one is copper, and it's got that sheen to it that's very cool. A couple of you are asking about the, uh, the Torx driver here. This is the, uh, the Brian Fellholter. Uh, let's see, there we go, Fellholter. Uh, it's called the Screw It. This is a great little set. It actually comes with... Uh, a few drivers, uh, a 6, an 8, a 10, and a 15, so super useful. 
Uh, and it's a really nice uh, little spinning ball on some ball bearings right there. It's a neat piece. I, I've really enjoyed having it. A little pricey at 150 bucks. So enough talking, guys. Thank you for coming in. There's quite a few of us in here right now. So the way to do this, take your penny, seriously low tech right here, and use it to open this up. You're not going to scratch up any kind of metal using a copper penny because uh, the copper is going to be much softer than the metal is itself. So let's hope I can do this the right way. A little anxious to do this live, but happy that you guys are joining me here. So that's easy. That screw comes right off. I'm going to repeat the same process back here, but just a little bit more carefully because uh, this likes to scrape a little bit. So after that, you can actually just use your finger. These, these screws are so well made. And the tolerances are so tight. Did you scratch the pivot? No, I didn't scratch the pivot. Just breathe. Yeah, I know. There we go. There we go. So uh, the next phase of opening this up, there's like a hidden screw in here that I have to access. All right. Loosen this guy up. Got to move the scale. There we go. Moving the scale. Good. So that scales off. That's good. I'm going to have to replace the backspacer, so we'll go ahead and just start doing this stuff, though. Uh, these are T8s on the clip. There we go. Shurgorov has uh, pretty well-made components here, so that's nice. You guys have any questions or anything? <laughs> Uh, there we go. All right. Coming apart nicely there. A little spacer there. So cool. Very cool. This actually just pushes right out. All right. Coming here. This is a little screw right here. Also a T8, conveniently. Okay. Now. This is the part where I'm going to clear everything out of the way because this is where it starts to get tricky. This is going to come apart, but I really don't want to lose any ball bearings, and you'll see why in a second here. All right. Let's push this out. Here we go. Appreciate you guys stopping in. Uh, let's see. 31 of you guys. Oh, this is tough right here and very nerve wracking. I've done this before, but I did not enjoy it. There we go. Okay. Woo. Okay. So you guys see those ball bearings? Luckily, they all stayed right inside of that bushing right there, right inside of that little washer. But those are all gonna just completely fly all over the place here any second. Uh, and so we're gonna be extra, extra careful here uh, and try to do this secretively here. Let's see if I can do this by pushing this through. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna let me. I'm gonna have to take this off. Woo, you see that? Oh man, that's gonna be painful. On the other end of this, okay. So, those see those ball bearings are just freely sitting there. I'm gonna have to put those back in. Good deal on Browse. Yeah, there is a good deal on Browse. They're all 50% off today. They should be 100% off, and then still no one would buy it. Another good thing about this, it functions sort of as a little hammer. Perfect. Tight tolerances on these Shiro's, so there we go. All right, we have the knife totally disassembled and the Olive G10 scales are off. There we go. So, put those to the side. So now we're gonna get going with the reassembly. This is gonna be a bit complicated right here. The truth on Browse, yeah, the truth is that they're crap. Do not ever buy a Browse knife. If you have ever wanted to, 
put that thought completely out of your mind. It is a bad idea and you will regret it. I'm sorry, the truth hurts sometimes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put it through this first so we're not screwing it up. And then we're gonna put this on. All right, so now the painful part of reassembling they sure, oh, see, there's a ball bearing. Yee, they're going everywhere. Okay, uh, actually, I need my special tool for this. Uh, sorry, totally left this over there, ah, but we've got it. So I have found that uh, I have this little poker right here. I think that maybe like a paper clip might work as well, but uh, this is gonna have to go back together, okay? Uh, and we're gonna figure this out. So, I'm gonna lift this up. We'll see these, oh my God, this thing is so horrible. I'm just gonna transplant this as quickly as I can using this little thing. Oh God, okay, so three ball bearings are a wall right now. Oh boy, let's get this settled in there. This is literally the worst thing to ever try to assemble or disassemble and it is a huge pain in the ass. The only thing that would make this worse is if it was, so I pretty much lost all the ball bearings now. And what we're gonna have to do is literally take them all out with this and put them all back in one at a time. Found that is the only way to do it. So bear with me dudes while we do this. This should teach you not to disassemble <laughs> your Shurgorov knives, unless you absolutely have to or you want to do something like this. So while I am futzing around with this, we can talk about the scales. I ordered them through a guy that I found on Instagram. Uh, his handle is Department 13 Knives, D-E-P-T 13 Knives. So watch how this works. Each one of these ball bearings gets picked up by this little thing. I don't know how it is. It's magic. I must be lucky. I wouldn't be able to do this otherwise, but this thing literally magnetically picks these balls up and it allows me to put them in these holes uh, perfectly. So I don't know how I got that lucky, but you need to find a tool. You need to be aware of how horrible this is when you're setting this up, when you're thinking about doing this. That's why I had to do this live because my camera is only recording 10 minute long videos right now. I don't know if you've noticed that all my videos are 10 minutes, but uh, each one is that long because my camera only records for that long, but live I can go a lot longer. So this one I knew this was going to be painful during this part. So here we are. Good. Okay. Now we are still missing a couple of ball bearings here. Here's one. Two. Oh man. Be careful. Don't do that. Okay. Well, somewhere around here we're missing one. So, let the fun begin. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Okay, well, where, oh where, did that ball bearing go? <laughs> we having fun yet, guys? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. No, not there. Uh-oh. Man down. Man down. Ball bearing down. Uh. Uh-oh. Well, this is the fun of being live. That if I screw it up, you guys get to see it. In a minute, I'll just abort and try to find it another way. I didn't see it fly anywhere. Didn't see it go anywhere. Tried to keep track. Well, that is the fun of disassembling a Shirogorov. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together with the without the ball bearing right now, and I'll just have to redo it later for the sake of the video. That is the fun of doing this live, gentlemen. You get to see the horrors of Shirogorov ball bearings. All right. Get that back on there. Pray 
that we find that ball bearing at some point. I will let you guys know in a follow-up video. All right, get that back to, oh wait, I gotta put the backspacer in, so, oh boy. Good, so I got, uh, I also got this titanium backspacer to replace the G10 one, uh, because I think this will be a lot nicer. Uh, so good, we got that going. Go ahead and put this back on. Yep, yep, yep. This is some delicate work, gentlemen. I wish, I'm glad that I do surgery for a living or else this might be very difficult, but uh, if you can do this, you can do what I do at work. That's for sure. Okay, so let's see. Got the backspacer. This is all a very tenuous situation right now. I wanna get this secured so I don't have to mess with the ball bearings anymore. Uh-huh. Now, this screw. It's gonna go through here. Yep. Oh yeah. Ooh, this is some tough stuff. This is a seriously tough disassembly. All right. These Russians know how to make a difficult knife. There it is. Secured. Okay, so now that is not going to flop around on me. My ball bearings are more or less secured right now. I put this back together. So these scales are nicely milled to even have the cutouts that all of the uh, that the regular scales actually have for the clip and everything. They're CNC machined, very high quality stuff. Uh, before I put these on, I uh, cleaned them off with some rubbing alcohol and then uh, wiped them down with some oil so that they're clean. Oh, there it is. Good. Yep, yep, yep. This is fun. <laughs> if any of you guys saw where that ball bearing went, you could tell me. Go back and review this in slow motion. That's probably how I'm going to find it, is going back and watching this video. All right. Come on now. <laughs> Sneak preview of upcoming reviews. I had a couple of those at the beginning of the video. So you can always rewind. Frank, you have any ferrum forges? Yeah, I've got some ferrum forges. I'll bring those out here in a second. Let me get this thing secured. It's all wonky on me right now. This is, a no this is not an easy knife to disassemble and reassemble. I'm not going to lie. This is probably one of the hardest knives I've ever had to assemble and reassemble. Those are not seated at all. Oh, well, that's because this is the wrong screw. This one goes here. See, even these screws are slightly different, so it's not universal screws. That is gonna mess you up with the quickness. Okay, all right, there it is. Okay, it's in, good. That's it, right there, okay. There we go, clip is going on. Copper dust different from lightning strike, so yeah. As I was kind of explaining earlier, this copper dust is like the uh, the resin is impregnated with copper. And so uh, instead of a, a fiber running through it, it's actually the, the resin itself has got the copper dust in it. 
All right, backspacer looks great, matched perfectly. So he also sold me this backspacer. This is not a factory backspacer, but it might as well be. It looks like it. Oh, are you kidding me? Do I have to do this? Oh, that's so painful. Wow. How do I know if it's real copper? I really don't. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I got it. You can check out from Carbon Plate, see what they have to say about it. Let's see if I can sneak this in without having to take it all the way off. Negative. That is... Oh. You guys, you guys. I've never done this before, so I probably should have practiced before I went live with this stuff, but man, painful, right? Ooh. <laughs> Pin. All right, let's do this. Mm hmm. See if it goes through here. All right. First, we'll do that. Set ourselves up for success. This is some tough stuff. Not a fun knife at all. With the assembly and disassembly. All right. Let's use our hammer again. <laughs> That is what I like to do. If at first you don't succeed, hit it with something harder. There we go. Come on now. Problem may be the backspacer, actually. Okay, there it goes. Okay, now we're talking, guys. Now we're talking. Let's get this lined up here. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is really milled to some pretty good tolerances right there. Get that all the way through. See about lining it up here. <laughs> Remind me not to be on your operating table. Come on, man. This is not even close to the same. These tolerances are very tight. All right, let's see here. How am I going to get that to go through? <laughs> All right. It wants to go through, but it just won't. You know, I don't always watch all the way through uh, these these long videos like this sometimes, so I appreciate you guys staying here with me. Ah, yeah, hit it, hit it hard. Copper is pretty soft. But that's not really denting at all. Let's see here. Maybe if I disengage the lock. Sometimes that's the magic touch. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? The missing ball is just a... Oh, there it is! Oh, it magically appeared. Holy crap. You know, I can't see that very well. Oh, man. Well, should I do it, guys? Should I just do it? You guys just want to hang out for a little while? Because this is all just going to come back apart right now so that I can reconstruct all this. Oh, Lord. What a night we're having. I appreciate you coming in live, though. Do it. Yes, do it. How sad you found it. Pull out the Ferrum Forge knives. Okay, okay, here. So you guys aren't totally bored and watching me being an idiot, I can pull out a couple of other knives, move some of this other stuff out of the way. Ooh, not the ball bearing. Okay, here's a Ferrum Forge knife. Here's a Ferrum Forge knife. You guys are really trying to make me just lose my mind, aren't you? <laughs> this is so tough. Okay. Here we go again. Pray for me. This is suboptimal to say the least. But every time I take it apart, I kind of learn how to do it better the next time, so it's all right. Just push that through. This should slide now more easily. All right, coming apart, coming apart slowly. This is not easy. Stuck back together so well already. <laughs> yep, this is tough. Oh yeah, the stuck pivot, eh? Practice makes perfect. Break, take pressure off the lock bar. Oh, I know. I know all the tricks. It's just not wiggling. It's just, it just will come when it wants to come off. 
All right, let's see here. All right. All right, okay. Uh, maybe if I set it down. This is why my table has a bunch of dents in it. Because I keep... Oh, there it goes. Because I keep doing this all the time with these knives. All right, all right. Well, now we're in business. I got it off. Slide this up gently. Carefully. Oh, Lord. I did it again. Dropped a ball bearing. Be cognizant of that. Slide this guy together. All right. So note to everyone who follows me, do not disassemble Shirogorov knives with the single row bearing system or else you will hate yourself and everything. We're just gonna do it again. Just gonna do it again, dudes. I appreciate you guys watching all of this. Okay, this stuff doesn't want to come off. I really, really didn't want to have to redo it, but I found the ball bearing, so we're going to have to. All right. Let's do it. Put that right there. this on okay now we're in business so we will get this knife together and we will see the finished product tonight it's gonna happen it's just a matter of getting this all back together now I know I'm in the bottom of the screen it's probably not ideal but somebody wanted to see ferrum forge knives got that stinger XL and I've got the uh, Spinner. I actually have the CKF spinner as well. Gonna do a comparison video on those two. Uh huh. Man, this does not want to come off. Thank you. One by one. Put these back in. This is. Not dissimilar. Oh, we have them all. I see them all. They're all here. The last one. Okay. Go in. Go in. All right. Maybe if I whisper to it, right, it'll just work. There. We're done. All right. Mission accomplished. We are going back together. This blade is really sharp. Oh, my God. Okay. Back together there. We're getting better at this, gentlemen. We are getting better at this. What I do here is actually put this together on this side. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming together. Coming together. All right. Eventually. Man, this hates me. This knife hates me. I can tell. It does not want to be my friend. Well, I'm going to make it submit here. Is it smoother than my what now? So smoother than your Stinger XL. Oh. And all the bearings fall out. I really hope not. This knife just hates the shit out of me. It's so bad. Oh. That is definitely going to get points against it when you do a final review on something like this because you can't assemble the damn thing or take it apart easily. So there we go. That went together. Next phase. Right here. Nope. There's the backspacer, you idiot. All right. Right there. Oh, it goes on this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
learn from previous mistakes. All right. Did it. I did it. All right. It's going together. Screw. Okay. Where is that screw now? These ferrum forges are in the way. Okay. We're getting it, guys. We are getting it. For those of you who have stuck around, I appreciate your patience with me. This has been ridiculous, but I have learned from my mistakes, advanced my technique, and this knife is going to go together beautifully. Okay. Now, let's put this all the way through. Oh, see, now it fits because everything is together the right way. Oh, now we're cooking, guys. Now we're cooking. Okay. Now you can see what's actually coming together. Penny, most important tool of the day. Mm-hmm. Maybe just get it going with my fingers first. These are nicely made scales, man. Really quality stuff. I will eventually put some Loctite in here, but not right now. Oh yeah, here we go. Coming together. Oops. Nice thing about using a penny for this, if I get any copper on it, it'll just blend right in. Alright, that's nice and tight there. Get our pivot on tightly, disengage that lock bar for a nice smooth placement. Alright, and actually there we go, it's centered. So there are the scales on there. That looks pretty darn good. I may have to redo the centering on this pivot here a little bit. I'm not sure if it's totally on there the right way. It's a little bit more of a gap around the pivot screw on these scales than on the stock one. So I just want to make sure that it's nicely centered for my OCD. That's it. Cool. There we go. Now it's sitting down there better. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. There. Okay. Action's good. Centering is good. A little bit more tightness. Okay. Action is good. Centering is good. All right, put the clip back on. Guys, oh, look at that, we are in business. Mm-hmm, cool. There we go. Uh, is that backwards? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's going to go this way. Very cool. Coming together here. With the clip. There we go. So much fun with this knife tonight, huh? God, this was painful. What a difficult, difficult thing to assemble and reassemble, but my God, it looks good. Now, it's got a titanium backspacer. It's got carbon fiber scales with copper on them. So that's awesome. The action is still incredible. Move these guys off the screen. Move everything off the screen. 
What do you guys think? It's the real deal. It really is. It took me 35 minutes to do that. That was painful, and I screwed up a couple of times. I really appreciate you guys watching. What's smoother, the Shiro or the Stinger XL? So let's take a look here. This just kind of comes back together. This is going to make some funny noises for a couple of minutes until all the ball bearings get seated properly again. Uh, this knife is pretty smooth. This knife is pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, so this knife, though, the Stinger XL, the problem I have is that darn Hoback rolling detent on this thing. It doesn't really allow it to be as smooth as maybe you'd think it would be. It's pretty smooth, but it could be better. What did I buy myself? Oh, the detent on the... Uh, let's see, something is still a little bit off. I wonder if the stop pin didn't seat all the way. Just feels a little bit loose still. Yeah, it's still off center. Chavez or Shiro? I'm going to have to say uh, right now the, the Shiro is a bit more of a functional knife, in my opinion. So I like that about it. That's nice. There we go. Back to smoothness. I actually like the texture on these scales a little bit better than the original ones. You can see here that it was a, a horizontal seashell pattern. This is more of a diagonal seashell pattern. That's pretty cool. Smoothness wise. So let's take a look at uh, some guys wanted to see some previews. I already showed these at the very beginning, but this is uh, my buddy Nikos. Today's Grails, Tomorrow's Beater. His beautiful Dama Steel Jason Guthrie Scout. Beautiful. Uh, again, got this Chavez 228 here on the channel from my buddy Sandwich there. All right. Put this guy up here. Got the uh, Boker Lateralis as part of a uh, pass around going on here. This is nice. I don't know uh, how many of you guys here are in that pass around. Got a uh, the Riot Knives Hybrid Moment collab. I like that. I like that knife a lot. I've been really excited to pick that one up. That one actually came through uh, because of the uh, knife swap going on right here with this one. Someone had it on that and offered it to me. I picked it up. Uh, get this knife out here again. I've got so Ferrum Forge and I've got the custom knife factory Version of the spinner, so we're gonna get a comparison video going on here with these two guys uh, There are some pros and some cons to each of these not gonna get into them now I'm gonna make you watch that video when we do that, but which one of the I did a, uh, a video where uh, I or a, a post on Instagram, a poll where I had everyone choose between these two, and it was really neck and neck till the. Uh... Oh, where to get these scales? Okay, so I got these scales from a guy on Instagram. He goes by Department Thirteen Knives. If you follow me on Instagram, um, go and check that out. I made a post about it today. He's got a link in his profile. Uh, you can look it up. It's D E P T Thirteen Scales. Um, you can look it up online. They've got a website as well, uh, and you can order from there. Send the guy an email. The way I got it was I just sent him an email, uh, and he uh, re replied to me. Yeah, it's a carbon plate. That's the company that's uh, that's selling these right now. This is really nice. This totally changes the character of the knife. Really makes it extra special. And with that Vanax steel, you know, I don't really think I need to pick up one of the new versions. They just released those F3Rs, and I was really tempted by those, but I knew I had these scales coming, and I wanted to wait till they were here. And this looks better than those, <laughs> in my opinion. That backspacer is perfectly, perfectly matched. I couldn't be happier with this. You guys like these scales? Yeah? Yeah, Lane, you like that bullet aftermath right there? Uh, let's see a couple other knives coming up for previews since I have uh, your attention I got 40 of you in here right now. Let's take a look at these. Okay, TK knives TK knives. This is a couple of guys from uh, the Czech Republic. I have a full custom 
This is the uh, Juggernaut right here. And I have the Mjolnir, the Kaiser version. The Kaiser version of the custom Mjolnir that they make. Mjolnir. Very cool knives. Uh, other videos coming up. Uh, I don't think I've gotten this one on the camera yet. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Resenti Nirvana. You guys got to see this one. This is the first preview of this knife. Absolutely. Mirror washed blade, face reveal. Beautifully finished handle, integral. Super cool. Zirconium pivot collar. Very, very smooth. Super smooth. S very, very nice. Okay, uh, that one's on there. How about we just bring this one out onto the uh, camera here? This one was a popular knife. You guys like this one? <laughs> Nero's going to sleep on me looking at a Resenti. This guy's got some, some taste here. You guys got any questions for me right now? Since I'm done building this, I can actually pay attention to the live feed right now. So why don't we do a question and answer session? Go ahead and ask some questions, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can answer them for you. Leave this star of the video out right here for you guys. Uh, I can bring out my carbon, uh, my copper carbon fiber right here. M stitch or full size? Uh, I think uh, I'd probably go with the mini for EDC. I would love for someone to send me one of those stitches. I've gotten close to picking one up, but they're expensive. So let's talk about the difference between these two scales. So this is copper shred carbon fiber. How many knives do you own? I actually made a post a couple days ago on Instagram. I own myself uh, 18 knives right now. That is the cost, or that is the total on, uh, on that right now. So this is copper shred. This has filaments of copper inside of uh, some shredded pieces of carbon fiber and that's all then epoxied together. This is different in the sense that the resin itself is impregnated with the carbon and then the uh, and then the carbon fiber is made with that resin. Thoughts on traditional knives? I'm not really a traditional knife guy, uh, not gonna lie, it's just I prefer these newer, faster, smoother, better Things I'm a, I, I got into knives mostly because of the technology that's involved with them, uh, and really the traditional stuff doesn't really have uh, doesn't have any of that technology, so it's a little bit uh, different. You own 136. You counted today. I wish I just had 18. I'm working towards that goal. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit over. I, I will give an uh, for all of you people watching. Actually, I'm gonna have a sale sometime after Christmas where I'm gonna have to decompress a whole lot of my. Uh, collection 126 knives dude that's a lot I have too many right now I so I'm gonna have a sale sometime after Christmas um, and we'll see how that goes has the Mjolnir spent some time in the pocket actually this is a better solution the way that this clip sits is a better solution sometimes than what a lot of knife makers do and I'm gonna pick on this one because it's just so disappointing on such a nice knife is to have the clip where it perfectly <laughs> matches up with the log bar cutout. Now that's artistic maybe on this knife, but it makes it bunch up. On this one it actually dips into it and it doesn't actually cause that problem. It makes the, the clip hide a little bit better actually. it's This works well in the pocket. I like it a lot. Yep, loving this knife right now. See you later, Tony. Have a good night, dude. Good to see you. Are you going to do a second video in 4K with the Shiro? Sure, I'll do that. Yep, that's no problem. I This one is just not quite as good. I don't know why it doesn't stream in HD. Uh, I really wish that it would, but I'm going to have to go ahead and make a quick video in 4K that will get posted up some uh, at some later date. Got a bunch of videos that I recorded um, and uh, today and over the last few weeks. They're going to be coming up over the next few weeks, so pay attention to the YouTube channel here. Going to have a whole bunch of videos coming. Um, so thanks for watching guys. Uh, definitely come back. I'm going to be doing this more and more often. These live videos are a whole lot of fun. Got a better response this time uh, since I announced it on Instagram. So thanks very much. Uh, also pay attention. I'm going to do a 3,000 subscriber giveaway. One last tease for everyone who's still here. This guy is going to get given away uh, for free for Christmas. So uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays.
you're going to get a free knife for a 3,000 subscriber giveaway, and I will be doing that. So, uh, no, I'm not giving the Gavco away, but this guy, customized by Spade, with a hella edge on it right now, is going to get given away. So, I'll see you guys later. Have a good night. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you later. Take care, guys.